see the that question, I mean, is probably not as frequent, but here's a very important thing. Can a woman during the state of the period enter the message? Now that's a critical question. Let's look at this one. Ready for this one? This is a very critical one. Sisters, please pay attention to this one. We're waiting on. for this one. <laughs> oh, waiting for this one. Let's look at this one. Let's look at this hadith. Ready? Let's look at this hadith. This hadith, okay, was narrated, you could see Abu Dawood, let's look at it. Um, right there, fi sananihi. Jisra bin to the jaja. That she had said, Samitu Aisha Radilona Takawu Takul Ja Rasulas Salamuju Baiti Ashabi Shari Atun Fil Masjid. Fakala Wajihu Hadi Hil Buyutan in Masjid. To Madahal and Abisa Salamula Misna Al Kaumash Ayan Raja An Tunazal Lahum Ruxa. Fakaraj Ayim. Waju Hadi Buyutan in Masjid. For any Lao Hilul Masjid, Liha Udun Walaju. Okay, what happened? So I'm going to quote it. The Prophet ﷺ had actually come when the, the, the chambers or the houses for the Sahaba were actually really open and it was like an easy access from the masjid to their houses. And it was like, you know, it was really becoming like it was public transportation for everybody. They wanted to pass by the masjid. They wanted to go to their houses. They would pass by the masjid and go to their house and so forth. Now the Prophet ﷺ then said, well, you know, what do you have the Bhutan Masjid? You know, your your entrances should be from a different side from the masjid. We can't have the masjid be a place like it's like it's a it's a hallway. We can't have the masjid become like a hallway. So the Prophet came in and no one did anything. They were wondering, was like maybe something else was gonna be because they're used to their their houses be and have and share the same entrances with the masjid. So the Prophet ﷺ said that they should turn their entrances away from the masjid. And he said, for I do not permit this masjid, not to a woman that is on a state of a period and not in a state of Geneva, which we explained the state of Geneva in just a, just a little bit while ago. Now, here's the thing. The question is, is this hadith sahih or not? If it's hadith sahih, that's it. This is clear. There's no doubt about it. Let's go further. Don't worry. We're going to get there. Let's see this hadith in Sahih Muslim. La tabqayanna fil masjidi khawkhatun illa khawkhati abi khawkhata abi abi bakr. That no one's room or at least door or entrance would be basically a main entrance that it would share with the masjids with the masjid premise, except the the Khawkhat Abu Bakr, basically only Abu Bakr's entrance would basically be shared with the masjid. So here's the thing. What I actually want to get to is really what we as women are concerned about is this hadith really say or not well you know it's it's quite sad that we have actually i've seen a number of different people a number of different scholars deny that there was any dispute regarding this hadith's authenticity and i would like to hear my shaykh and this is really my shaykh this is not me you know <laughs> saying this this is actually my professor right here okay this is my professor hussein Afene. he's actually the most professor that's taught that taught me fiqh this is my professor right there maybe i can get a bigger picture of him okay so this is my professor a man he was not somebody to mess with definitely not somebody to mess with all right and what we're gonna do um let's see and of course you could see um, my professor was actually doing this beautiful study. And by the way, um, that professor, he has eight daughters, okay? Eight daughters, one of them actually died of cancer, Allah Yerhamha. But anyhow, he basically did a beautiful study in regards, it wasn't just him, 
it wasn't just him. This isn't a new study where all of a sudden it's like I discovered something that no one discovered before. Let's look into this. So some scholars actually, he said, some scholars that actually went into um, preventing women that are on their menses from entering the masjid. And they basically said, yeah, so basically quoted this ayah that we are working on, this ayah right here. And he said the quotation in regards to this ayah where they said, well, this is actually equal to the person in the state of Geneva based on that hadith, which is this hadith. You could see with Narida Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah. But he said, He said, well, actually, the chain of narration has a lot of dispute in that regard. And of course, some scholars, they basically considered that women during the state of their period, that they can actually enter the masjid. Who said that? Well, in Imam Ahmad, um, in Imam Ahmad, in one of the opinions, and even Il Muzani, who's actually Shafi'i Madhab, and that was also narrated by Abu Dawood, Al Imam Dawood, and Ibn Hazm al Of course, these are two different scholars. Imam Dawood and even Ibn Hazm, they both said that. So, how many, how many scholars do we have so far? Did he mention? Imam Ahmad, we've got Imam Muzani, we've got Dawood, we've got Ibn Hazm. Those are four. Let's see Imam Ahmad. How do and what evidence did he use? And what did he say? So look at this. This is a book called Al Insaf fi Ma'rif al Rajah min Khilaf. It's almost um almost twelve volume book. And he basically said in one of the narrations, in one of the narrations upon Imam Ahmad, that you know if a woman were to actually make wudu, or at least if she were to make sure that she was and going to contaminate the masjid that she would she can enter the masjid for a halaqa for teaching a class or probably um uh, you know joining in learning all right and this was not only mentioned by previous scholars but that was also what Il albani himself in the book tamam al minna in uh in in tamam al minna and this is the page number he also had chosen this opinion as well so, so wait 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 so um, with with that with the most of the people say talking about that hadith, were they Hanafi? Hold on, we're gonna get to it, Nora. Okay, so in in here he basically said, well, this is his at least my professor's um, chosen opinion, and he says in the reason and the evidence. With the, the evidence to prove that he said number one is that there is no dalil there is no evidence to prove that you can uh, hold on. um he said number one is that the oh, oh, my laptop all of a sudden froze are you all with me here Did we're here laptop... okay good my laptop just froze hold on I don't know why. Come on, laptop, don't do that to me. Let's go like that. Okay, here we go. Same on that laptop. Uh, okay. I know. <laughs> Um, so number one, he said, because generally, if you want to consider something as haram, you really have to have a dalil sahih sarih. What does that mean? So there are two types. You can have an authentic evidence, but sometimes the wording is not straightforward in where the wording itself can contain some ambiguity to be really clear to prohibit or to at least permit so in that situation he said well we don't actually have an authentic hadith that says that women could not enter the masjid when they're in a state of a period well, let's see what Imam Nawi, who's actually Shafi'i, and he said, وَأَحْسَنُ مَا يُوَجُّ بِهَا ذَا الْمَذْهَبِ أَنَّ الْأَصْلَ عَدَمِ التَّحْرِيمِ وَلَيْسَ لِمَنْ حَرَّمَ دَلِيلٌ صَحِيحٌ صَرِيحٌ Look at, look at this. In Imam Nawi, he said, what you could say, أَحْسَنُ مَا يُوَجُّ بِهِ هَذَا مَا يُوَجُّ بِهَا ذَا الْمَذْهَبِ أَنَّ الْأَصْلِ the, the general in general what actually acts what as what stands as the proper madhab or the proper at least opinion for a certain school is that everything that everything is supposed to be not considered as prohibited and whoever had prohibited does not actually have a standing sound slash authentic evidence that is straightforward and clear in its wording in that situation basically 
leaving it as really not having sound evidence. Let's see. In Albani said, "Well, قول عندنا في هذه المسألة من ناحية الفقهية كالقول في مس القرآن من الجنب للبراءة الأصلية وعدم وجود ما يرفض على التحريم وبه قال الإمام أحمد. الإمام الألباني he said, in regarding this matter, it from the fiqh standpoint is exactly the same ruling as holding the Quran. So 